Whatever you give, it's going to come back. Now, it might not come back through that channel, but it's going to come back. Why? Because it is a law. Whatever you give, it's going to come back. Now, all of us hear the saying, as you sow, so shall you reap. And we usually, we use that in a negative context. But let's look at the positive side of that. That if you sow some good stuff out here, if you make it your business, how you give your life, to give the best that you have, to give love, to give encouragement, to give help, to give support. If that's what your life is about, whatever you put out here, ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you, it's going to come back. Now, the reason that most people don't give is because they operate out of a, a consciousness of scarcity. They don't believe that there's enough to go around. They can't see themselves having the capacity to give. They don't believe that they have anything to offer. They don't see themselves as an opening for the universe to work through. So if you begin to look at this new era that we're in, begin to see yourself as an opening for the universe to move through, to work through, to make a difference in life. See yourself being used by life to improve the quality of life, to expand and to grow. Most people have a very limited view of themselves and a very limited view of the universe, do not see their relationship to the universe and cannot see how energy and things can flow through them. I love Gibran and the prophet. Then said a rich man, speak to us of giving. And he answered, you give but little when you give of your possessions, but is when you give of yourself that you truly give. Gibran goes on to say that those who give little of the much which they have and they give it for recognition and their hidden desire makes their gifts unwholesome and we know people who give only to be recognized I, I love that old saying judge a man not by what he does but by that that he doesn't have to do and to judge the true quality of a man is what do you do when nobody's looking Gibran goes on to say something else important he says and there are those who have little and give it all these are the believers in life and the bounty of life. See, most people don't give, ladies and gentlemen, because they don't believe in life. Most people don't give because they don't understand the abundance in life. And so they go through life holding back. Holding back on life. Not understanding this also. That what you hold back from life, life holds back from you. So most of us go through life, ladies and gentlemen, not giving, and we're cheating ourselves. And you're also cheating life. See, I believe that, that all of us have some work to do. I strongly believe that. That each one of us showed up to do something. That each one of us showed up to contribute something to life. And that if we don't do it, it will not be done. See, no one is going to give Les Brown's speech. No one is going to write your book. See, if you've been given something to do, and if you don't do it, what you're doing is short-circuiting the flow of the universe. See, if, just imagine, if you please, we had a circle, and people are standing around in this circle. And let's say we were given a bucket of love, and then I pass it to the person to the right, and they pass it to somebody else, 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 and it comes back to me. One of the great things about giving is that as you give, you're going to receive. What we want to do is keep the flow going, keep the flow going. If anybody gets the bucket of love and stops and holds it there, all of us suffer. They've short-circuited the flow. They've stopped what was going on, the energy that was going around. See, you are part of an equation, and you are needed. Part of why we should begin to look at how we give up our lives, and that we've got to begin to see what is it that I'm supposed to do? What is my life work? And then give ourselves to that. Because as we do that, ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you, as you begin to take on this new era that we're in, if you decide that I'm going to begin to start living life generously, I'm going to start giving more of myself. I'm going to start putting out more, contributing more to life. Here's what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. I guarantee you 
that life will take on a whole new meaning for you. I guarantee you that as you begin to give more of yourself in your work, give more of yourself in your marriage, give more of yourself in your relationships with your families and friends, give more of yourself to your talent, to your vocation, to your job or your business, as you begin to set high standards for giving that which you have been given to share in the universe, I guarantee you that life takes on a whole new dimension. That you'll be happier, you have a greater sense of happiness and fulfillment in life. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to have some challenges. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have some problems that you'll be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. No, that doesn't mean any of that. No, that will not exempt you from that. But what it does mean that now you will begin to take off on some new paths to some newer horizons. That you'll begin to see life totally different than most people. I think that's what Henry David Thoreau meant when he said most men live in quiet desperation. That most of us go through life because we're not using that which we've been given, that we are punished. That we're going through life getting up in the morning with no reason to get up. See, once you find out your purpose in life, and once you decide that you're going to live a life of sharing and giving and contributing to life, you don't need an alarm clock to get up. That you move differently. You have more life in you. But most people are walking around dead. Most people are looking lifeless. Most people find it a hard effort to smile. Most people are abusing themselves with alcohol and drugs and evading their own greatness and, and holding back on themselves. For years, I was cheating myself. For years, I could have been doing exactly what I'm doing right now. But I was afraid. I didn't feel I was worthy and I didn't want to recognize that which I had been given. I had a limited view of me and I was literally running away from me. I mean, life sometimes chases and I say, no, 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 we want you to do something great. No, not me. Go get somebody else. No, 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 no. You're not talking about me. No, no, no. You don't know what I've been doing. No, 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 no. We want you. We can just groom you and, and train you and, and get you ready. Me, yeah. Are you sure? Me, yeah. No, no, not me. No, I just, I'm just, I don't know. I don't want to do that, see. <laughs> and then so I just get tired of chasing. Say, come over here. Come over here. <laughs> you ain't got enough sense to come. Just come over and shut up and straighten up. <laughs> They just whip you so hard after a while, you say, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of the reasons that we should begin to give more is because we owe a debt. Reading a book, John Powell, who I'm afraid to tell you who I am because you might not like me and that's all I've got. Line in there, I, I love to quote, we are made by those who love us and by those who refuse to love us. As I talk to you right now, you're looking at a lot of people up here, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just Les Brown standing here. A lot of people have contributed to make me who I am right now. None of us are here because of our own doing. All of us have had life to contribute to us. Many times complete strangers. So we all have cookie people in our lives. What do you mean by cookie people? Cookie people and chicken soup people, as I call them when I do my workshops. <laughs> cookie people are people like Miss Lillian. When my mother used to whip me, as a kid, and I was a bad twin, always getting in trouble, Ms. Lee would hear me screaming, and after Mama would get through, Ms. Lee would come over to the house and give me some cookies <laughs> and milk. And my, you know, and, and my mama said, what you doing back there, Lee? And I'm just giving him some cookies, Mamie. And she said, here you are, Leslie, even though you're a bad little boy, I brought you some cookies. <laughs> so cookie people are people who, even when you are bad, even when you are not being who you really are, they look beyond your thoughts and see your needs. Even if you're a moody person and curse them out and dog about sometimes, these cookie people love you unconditionally. How many of you have ever had cookie people in your life? All right. So we all have had cookie people that the universe has put in our lives to contribute to us. The other people are the chicken soup people. Chicken soup people are people that you can call at two o'clock in the morning and say, I got a flat tire, will you come help me? Or my battery is not running, would you come give me a jump? Or I need some help, would you come get me out of jail? <laughs> if you don't have some chicken soup people in your life, you better get some. <laughs> but these are people that you can always call on to help you out. So I'm encouraging you to give a letter of appreciation to some of the cookie people in your life. Some of them might have already made their transition. 
write some letters to some people who were a leg up for you, some people who contributed to you being who you are, and just say, I was just thinking over the years, I know you know I love you and appreciate everything you've been to me, but I just wanted to drop you this letter. How do you think they feel if they get that? Just out of nowhere, just want to thank you for how you have enriched my life. You might not have thought much of it, but because of the help and assistance you gave me on that particular day, that was a turning point in my life. Why should we give? Well, giving creates a vacuum. And as we know, nature abhors a vacuum. See, when you give, you create a vacuum, you are now in a position to receive. See, if I have my arms closed holding on to everything I've got, nothing is available to come in. But if I'm open, if I created a vacuum there, by giving and keeping the flow going, the stuff in the universe is going to come back to me, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to come back, whatever you give. Whenever I go into a room and give a speech to inspire people, to help them to develop their greatness, if you get 10% of what I get, because as Bach says, we teach that which we need most. I'm not wearing any crown. I need it as much as I'm sharing it. I'm still growing. I'm still unfolding. I'm still seeking to discover my greatness. And if you get 10% of what I get when I walk out of here, see, there will be a different man walking out of here than who came in here. And as I give, the more I give to you, the more I get. Most people don't understand that. That's a law of life. Do you know that we can literally eliminate poverty overnight? We can eliminate hunger and homelessness overnight if people understood the concept of what giving means and the power in it. About the difference that it can make in our lives. I guarantee if you go to any rundown neighborhood and interview the people there, evaluate their lifestyles and what they're doing and what they're contributing to life, and then go in a wealthy neighborhood and talk to those people and evaluate them and check out what they're doing with their energy and their time and what they're contributing to life. Here's what you're going to discover what Earl Nightingale said. He said, our success in life is directly related to the quantity and the quality of the service that we give. I guarantee you that you will find that people who have more, people that are living the abundant life are the contributors to life, ladies and gentlemen. They are the people that are giving more and the people who are operating out of scarcity and poverty consciousness, these are the people that are down and out. These are the people that are complaining. These are the people that are blaming the world and everybody for where they are. But if they took that same energy and begin to invest and give something back to life. I was in New Jersey and I had to give a, a political presentation to a group there that were trying to organize a community to begin to revitalize that particular community. And a guy was telling me very proudly as we were walking through a housing project, he said, the city is about to give $55 million to renovate these housing projects. I said, what a waste. He said, why would you say that? I said, let me ask you something. And the person that was standing next to him, I said, do you live in this building here? He said, yes. I said, how many families live here? He said, six families. I said, we walked in the door and we can smell the stench of urine. Does it take a genius to go down to the store and perhaps sacrifice buying three packs of cigarettes and buy some Tide of soap and water and come back here and wash this stench out of here? Does it take a genius to get a can of paint and paint over the graffiti and repair the mailbox? Does it take a genius for that? I say to you, you pour the money in these housing projects and you don't change the people that are living in the projects before you are completed, they'll be right back to where they were before. Yeah. If it is to stand, and I'm not saying that there aren't situations where people need some help and assistance, but people must be allowed to contribute. I say they should pay for the paint. I say they should pay for the mailboxes to be repaired and the windows to be broken. And I guarantee you if the children go outside throwing a ball, they say, don't you hit that window, you fool. You know how much I paid for that window? <laughs> Makes a difference. People need to be given the opportunity to contribute and invest in life. And then life is appreciated. But if we just give, and you don't want to just give. You want to give to people who are out there struggling and making it and trying to make impact in the universe. I'd rather give to a man who's already doing it than somebody over here doing nothing and trying to go over there. Man, why don't you get up and do something? Hey, listen, if you have to go over there and get them up, you have to do that for the rest of your life. 
So do it with those who are doing it. So you want to keep the flow going by working with people who are contributors to life. Leave the dead people alone that are taking away from life. There's a scripture, when I heard it, I couldn't understand it. I say, how cold? He that hath shall get, and he that hath not even that that he has shall be taken away. I said, now that's not fair. Ladies and gentlemen, that is fair. He that hath what becomes the key. He that hath a generous view of life. He that has courage. He that hath initiative. He that hath resourcefulness shall get. But if you're like the guy that I was in a hotel and asked him, I said, look here. I said, um, you know, he was a bellman. I said, you know, I need to get my shoes shine. Oh, I don't shine shoes. Oh, how long have you been working here? Oh, about three months. What were you doing before then? Oh, I just got out of the joint. Yeah? You don't shine shoes. That's beneath you, but it was okay to steal. That's not beneath you, huh? <laughs> See, if, uh, same, another guy was ex-offender. I was telling him I had a job for him. What kind is it? What do you care? <laughs> Making an honest living, not worried about somebody knocking on your door in the middle of the night. If it's cleaning toilets, you ought to be happy. See, he's a taker, ladies and gentlemen. He think that somebody's just going to come give him something out here in life. It doesn't happen that way. No, it doesn't happen that way. Here's something else you're going to discover in giving. Something that's very important. Give thanks. Giving thanks creates power. Give thanks for your house, give thanks for your apartment, for your car, for your family, for your health, for your relationships, for what you have. When we focus on something, it expands. When you're giving thanks, when you're showing a spirit of gratitude for what I got, not that you're satisfied with it, but you're grateful for what you got. Whatever you focus on, that's what you're going to continue to multiply and expand in your life. But if you focus on what you don't have, if all you can do is point out the negative things in your life, whatever you focus on, you're going to expand that. Some people, all they can do is complain. That's all they can do. They can't find anything to say good about life or about anybody else. Every time they open their mouths, that's what their minds are consumed with, and that's all they're producing in their lives. And these are people that you don't want to be around. Develop a spirit of gratitude. I'm thankful for life. I'm thankful to be an American. I'm thankful to be on this part of the planet. I'm thankful to see another day. No, things aren't what I want them to be. No, I don't have all the things I want to have. But I'm thankful that I'm still here. I have another opportunity, another day to live, another chance to contribute, another chance to make a difference in life. So begin to give thanks for what you have. Whatever you focus on. Remember now, you want to become aligned with the universe. If you have scarcity in your life, it's because you have a consciousness of scarcity. As you begin to become thankful for what you have, for the abundance that you now know is coming your way, that you're attracting to you for the good relationship that is coming your way right now, it will begin to create incredible opportunities for you to begin to improve your life and the quality of life of people around you. Giving is also, ladies and gentlemen, forgiving. Give forgiveness. Many of us do not realize that we cannot grow, that we are blocking ourselves, we are blocking our good in the universe. We're literally standing in the way of the flow of what life has to us because we haven't learned how to forgive. We haven't learned how to let things go so we can get on with our lives. When we forgive, ladies and gentlemen, it's not for the other person. Oh no, it's for you. It's not for them, not because they deserved it or they earned it. You're forgiving other people. First of all, you've got to forgive yourself. But when you forgive other people, it is mentally and spiritually healthy to forgive. To let that luggage go, as Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before. Oh, we hear it, but it's hard to do. It's hard. What you have is enough. Whatever you have to give. And the more you give, the more you realize you have to give. And we all have to. There are people who made the supreme sacrifice for us to enjoy freedoms that we take for granted. Oh, none of us, none of us can feel that we have nothing to give back. Next thing is, 
Giving empowers you. It makes you more powerful. See, the more you give to life, the more you're able to get from life. See, most of us go through life, ladies and gentlemen, feeling that we don't have enough to share, feeling that we will be depleted if we give of our resources because we don't see ourselves connected to the abundance of life. I feel very strongly that we can make an incredible difference in life. Phyllis Marx said, giving empowers you because taken to its ultimate, what you are really giving is love. Love is the motivating force behind the infinite supply of universal energy. Love truly makes the world go round. And as with anything circular, it's going keep coming back. Phyllis is right. So as she continues to give love and hope to these people, she receives love and hope for herself and helping to begin to restructure and redesign the kind of life that she wants. We all have had experiences in our lives that if we permit these experiences to do so, we will allow them to weigh us down. If we permit them to do so, there will be luggage that will be dragging through life, holding us down, stifling our potential to give and to contribute in life. If we continue to carry all of these things, we can never be open to the love and the abundance and the opportunity that life has to offer us because we are so full with what we've got. I'm thinking about an exhibition that was held in Africa where they were trying to catch some monkeys that were a very rare species. And because they were so fast, so agile and, and very fragile, they did not want to harm them in, in catching them. They did not want to hurt them physically. So what they did in order to catch them, they found that these monkeys were very fond of a certain kind of nut that grew in that particular area of Africa. And what they did was that they put these nuts inside of bottles and put a rope on the bottle and held the rope from a distance. And so the monkeys would come and, being curious, see the nuts inside the bottle, would reach in and pick the nuts up. Now, what happened was that they couldn't pull their hands out with the nuts still in the bottle. <laughs> and so then the exhibitioners, the hunters, would come while the monkeys are there just jumping around. All they have to do now is let the nuts go. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they got to do is just let they just dance it all around. All they have to do is let it go and they can be free and run. They hold it on to the nuts and the people come and catch them. <laughs> and a lot of us, that life is kicking our butt and all we have to do, <laughs> all we have to do <laughs> is let it go. <laughs> We just keep holding on <laughs> like we're crazy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, giving creates energy in ourselves and in others. Have you ever helped a blind person go across the street or help a senior citizen or give somebody some help? You know, just, you know, held the door for somebody, an elevator. I mean, don't you have a good feeling inside like, I done good. <laughs> How many of you get a good feeling inside when you do something good for somebody? See, we're really giving to ourselves. See, that's really the law. When you are giving, you are giving to yourself. That's who you're giving to. So you want to give yourself some good gifts. There's a principle underlying the concept of giving. The energy flowing through us as we do that love generates abundance in our lives and we are able to reap so much from life as a result of our giving. How are you giving up your life? Do you know to the degree that you are giving to that degree determines how much you enjoy life? How meaningful your life is? The things, ladies and gentlemen, I used to do, I can't do now. That is unbecoming for the role that I have selected with where I am at my life and what I want to contribute to life. It is inconsistent. I can't do it. Even if I desire to do it, I can't do it. No, because it doesn't fit because of my vision of myself and the contribution that I want to make to life. Because it's not enough to give the message. You must also be the message. Next thing is that we must give 
out of a sense of oughtness. Emmanuel Kant in the book called Critique of Pure Reasoning, he says sometimes we must give out of a sense of oughtness that the certain things that happen that we just say something ought to be done about this. A policeman in Washington, D.C. was working one of his patrol areas and he came up to a car in a park and the car was running and he saw a figure slumped over the stern wheel. He got there looking in with a flashlight and he saw a 14-year-old boy with a bullet through the back of his head. And he said, oh no, he has a son himself. That could have been his son. And he says, something ought to be done. We're losing too many young people. And so this man went home. He had like several thousand dollars worth of exercise equipment in his basement. He rented a place. He started bringing the kids in to get them involved in taking care of their bodies and physical exercise and athletic activity. He now has expanded that to getting them involved in entrepreneurial ventures, saying that this is a free enterprise system and the more enterprising you are, the freer you are. And now these kids have started their own business. They have a little shopping center that they run, they operate, they are managing. And they have commercials on radio and I'm going to be going there doing some training with them. So he decided because of that event that I ought to do something. Now some of the things that's going to happen when you look out and see what can I contribute to, what can I give, I guarantee you ladies and gentlemen you're going to have a voice that's saying it's just no use. It's it's out of control now. There will be a voice telling you that you'll be wasting your time and wasting your energy and wasting your effort. I say don't listen to it. Listen to that still small voice that says I can do something and I ought to do it. We ought to do it. The Israeli said this, nothing can resist the will of a people that will stake even their existence on the extent of their purpose for good. I strongly believe that as we begin to look toward the future and that as each day we get up in the morning and be it that you're going to give to make the environment safer for everybody on the planet, be it that you're going to do things to help the sick or the physically disabled or recovering crack cocaine addicts, be it that you want to help and contribute to youth or do something for the homeless, whatever you want to do, if you get up in the morning out of a sense of oughtness and decide that I am an opening for the universe, that life can work through and use me as a channel and as an instrument for change, and each day we get up, we make it our personal business to make a difference in those areas that we're concerned about. How are we going to do it? We don't know, but we know that we can make a difference. And we might not be here to see the results of our efforts. We might not be here as many of the people who before us made sacrifices that they did not live to see or reap the benefits of. James Weldon Johnson, stony the road we trod, bitter the chestnut rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers died? We've come over a way that with tears has been watered. We've come treading a path through the blood of the slaughtered. When we came here, somebody paid the price for us to be here. And as we begin to look toward the future, we all have an obligation to give something back. A lot of us don't give more because of the fact that we allow ego to get in the way. I'm thinking of a man that was well-dressed walking through a neighborhood one day and a lady came to the door and she said, hey, you. He stopped, he said very politely, yes, ma'am. She said, come here. He came to her, yes, what may I do for you, ma'am? She said, I want you to cut my wood. He said, yes, ma'am. He took his coat off and he took the ax that she had there and he cut the wood. She said, I want you to take some around the back and put some in the fireplace. He said, yes, ma'am. And he did that. And after he finished, she said, what do I owe you? He said, nothing, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you. She said, okay. And he left and he was walking down the street with his coat over his shoulder. And her maid came up. She said, do you know who that was? 
And the lady she worked for said, no. She says, that's the great Negro educator, Booker T. Washington. She looked out the window. She said, is that right? She said, send for him. And that lady that Booker T. Washington went in and cut the wood for contributed several million dollars to his dream of building an institution of higher learning, Tuskegee Institute that is standing today. What if he had said, Excuse me. you said do what? Cut your wood. Don't even come up in here with that kind of stuff. You better cut your own wood if you wanted to get it cut. You cold. <laughs> he didn't allow his ego to get in the way. He gave what he had. He contributed. How much have we denied ourselves? How much have we blocked ourselves? Because we allow that little ego to get in the way, to prevent us from giving and serving, which is the essence of life. Which is the essence of life. It's about service. And so I say as you look out on the future, decide that you are going to allow your life to be a life of service. Decide that you are going to give more than you have ever given before. Decide that each day that you are given life, that you're going to make a difference with your life, that you're going to make a statement with your life, that once again, as opposed to sitting back feeling like a victim, that you're going to see yourself as a channel, as an opening for the universe to work through. And that you'll say to life, use me. Oh, use me. I got more to give. Use me. Repeat out to me, I want life to use me. I want to give more. Share more. Be an expression of love. Be an instrument of hope. To impact our youth. To recreate their future. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for being here. I'm grateful to be able to serve. Yes, this is Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy, Leslie Calvin Brown, saying it's been a plum-pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege. Thank y'all here. Thank you.